What the heck? I thought it'd be a normal meal. But suddenly, my vision started getting fuzzy. My stomach was in knots. I broke into a cold sweat, and I crumpled to the ground. My husband just sat there, no reaction. The last image I had was his smirk. Why? Why is he smiling like that? Did he? Drifting in and out, his voice broke through. Finally, it's done. I blacked out, not really getting his message. When I woke up, our relationship had shifted big time. My name's Kim, 30 years old. I majored in psychology in college and now work as a middle school counselor. Everyone's got some things they need to work on, whether it's a big or small, no matter the age. Issues might seem tiny to one person, but huge to someone else and the other way around. Back in college, I struggled mentally with social stuff, but found help with an amazing school counselor. She turned my life around, sparking a new dream in me. Before, I was aimless, but she inspired me to pursue counseling. I'm living that dream now and loving it. But it's not just the job. My husband, Dennis, adds to my happiness. We go way back to college days. We connected in a music club, got together at a reunion, and got married three years later. With our history, we're more friends than just a couple. He's always been my go-to guy. Now at 30, and married for two years, we're at the point of thinking about kids. But intimacy's been sparse lately, probably because He's been swamped with work. I can't let things slide. So, I brought it up. Hey, Dennis, there's something on my mind. Got a sec? I caught him on a Saturday night after he'd been working. He let out a sigh and responded. What is it now? I pushed past his tone. So, we're both 30, right? Don't you think we should talk about having kids? Why now? I get back, be from work, and this is what you hit me with? I just thought we should chat about it. Could you pick a better moment? Read the room. I didn't mean to. I'm not in the headspace for this conversation, especially about this. He cut the conversation short with a deep sigh and left the room. This has been his MO lately. We used to talk through anything, no matter how tired he was. But now, he's ducking these talks. I've noticed a shift in him over recent months. Maybe his work, taking up our together time, is the culprit. But my efforts to reconnect seem pointless if he doesn't meet me halfway. I do want kids. But first, we've got to be on solid ground. The following day, he didn't get out of bed until the afternoon. Once he finally showed up in the living room, I tried again. Look, I'm sorry about yesterday, but we've been drifting apart. I was hoping we could get back to spending quality time together, like old times. From kids to this? Can't you see I'm buried in work? I know you're slammed, but working late every night and the weekends? It's a lot. Can't you clock out at a normal hour once in a while? 
Man, you never let up. You get why I'm doing this, right? For us. I'm grateful. Really, I am. But I'm working too. So you don't need to burn yourself out. Enough. Let's shelf this for now. With that, he snagged his wallet and phone and split. As the door shut behind him, I felt this tightness in my chest release, and the waterworks started. Why? Why is he acting this way? I just wanted us to get back to how things were. His words echoed in my head as I cried, the tears just pouring out. That day, I sobbed like I hadn't in ages, and it was just the start of a much bigger storm. Morning greetings, gone. If I said dinner was ready, he'd bail. My attempt to bridge our gap had backfired. Instead of getting closer, we grew even more distant. One weekend, with him off working again, I was left to my own devices. I opted for a house cleanup. I tackled the living room, our bedroom, and then his room, which was a mess. As I cleaned up his junk, I spotted a weirdly colored receipt. Under his dresser, what's this? A receipt? It was greenish, and from a swanky French place I'd been raving about. I remembered that unique tinted receipt because someone posted about their dinner there online. Why did he have this? He never took me. The order was clearly for two, maybe three. I was sure. He knew I wanted to have dinner there. Why keep it from me? A sinking feeling set in. Digging deeper, his trash yielded more two-person dining receipts. He'd been eating out often, and clearly with someone he didn't want me to know about. The dates matched his late nights at work. Had he been lying? Maybe he was seeing someone and just using work as a cover. My head swirled with doubts and my heart felt heavy. I had to ask him. When he got in around eleven that night, I jumped right in. Are you seeing someone? His eyes went wide, but he quickly laughed it off, saying, "Seriously, you think I'm cheating?" That's way out there. Then, explain these receipts. They're all for two. Who did you go out with? Just a work buddy. I pick up the tab because they're junior to me. Really? Why would I lie? Cheat on you? Come on. I hope that's true. His reaction felt off. Typically, he'd be upset. But now, he just gave a forced grin. He was up to something, so I kept tabs on him. But he was on his toes, not slipping once. In fact, he flipped the script, acting super sweet, like in our early days. Kim, how about dinner tonight? I'll be home early, and let's hang out Saturday. Remember that cake you love? Got one for dessert tonight. It was like night and day from before, but his sudden niceness was definitely because I'd called him out. He was hiding an affair. Catching him in the act, though, was proving tough. While I was、uh, mulling over my next move, he threw a curveball. Our anniversaries. Saturday, right? I've got it all covered. Let's make it special. You're doing everything. Yeah, I've been a pain recently. 
I'll take care of everything. Wine, snacks, the works. That's sweet. But why the sudden plan? Just want to show you I care. Is that okay? I couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. Something fell off. To be on the safe side, I gave my folks a heads up, asking them to check in if they hadn't heard from me by Saturday night. Finally, our anniversary day came. Per Dennis's suggestion, I caught a movie after work. When I got back. The table was set with dishes and wine. Welcome home, Kim. Everything's set, he said, flashing an odd smile. I thanked him, but hesitated before sitting. The dishes smelled amazing, but I wasn't hungry. Aren't you eating? He asked, looking genuinely confused. I just. Shook my head. He smirked, then poured me a glass of wine. Forget the food for now. Try this wine. Got it just for you. Wait, the bottle was already open. I opened it earlier to let it breathe. Go on, have a drink. All right, thanks. It was strange how he kept pushing the wine. Suspicious. I faked a sip, then snuck a quick bite. Suddenly, everything went haywire. What the heck? I thought it'd be a normal meal, but suddenly my vision started getting fuzzy. My stomach was in knots. I broke into a cold sweat, and I crumpled to the ground. And Dennis just sat there, no reaction. The last image I had was his smirk. Why? Why is he smiling like that? Did he? Drifting in and out, his voice broke through. Finally, it's done. What did he mean by done? What is he talking about? Desperate for answers, I tried speaking but couldn't. He looked downright ecstatic. Saying, "You can join me now, just us, no more distractions. We're together forever." Yeah, I love you too. In that moment, my love for him froze over. It clicked. He must have spiked the food. His plan was to harm me from the start. Before I could process this, darkness took over. Waking up, I found myself under a soft, hued ceiling. I heard my parents exclaim, "Kim, Mom, Dad! Thank goodness, we found you out cold. We were so scared. Thanks for coming. Where's Dennis?" They hesitated and looked to the side. I sat up. Following my dad's gaze, and was shocked to see my injured husband beside an unknown young woman on the bed. My dad filled me in. Dennis tried to land you in the hospital with something in that wine. The woman is his secret girlfriend. The wine? Yeah, doctors didn't find anything harmful in you. Seems you had a stress-caused ulcer. So the sharp pain wasn't his doing. No, just a strain of being with him. If you'd really drunk that wine, it could have been bad. Why does he look so rough? We got into it, landed a couple on him. We're handing him to the cops soon. As my dad spoke up, Dennis's face. Went ghost white. In a sudden bout of desperation, he dropped to his knees, begging my dad, "Hold on, isn't getting the police involved a bit much? I mean, Kim's all right. Excuse me, we all know 
what you tried to pull on our daughter. Acting clueless won't cut it. She's been through hell because of you. We've got that wine as evidence. Hand that over, and you're toast. Hold on. If this gets out, I'll lose my job. My family will suffer. Not our problem. You teamed up with her. Pointing at the mistress. And did this to our Kim. Unforgivable. My rattled husband then looked at me. His eyes big and pleading like a puppy left out in the rain. Please, I'll make it right. Name your price. So please. I'd made up my mind. No room for leniency for a guy who couldn't even muster an apology. I shrugged him off and shot back. Your money? Not interested. An I'm sorry would have been a start. Knowing I didn't have a child with someone like you? Dodged a bullet. Please, I'll apologize. Give me a chance. Too late. Whatever you say, the ship's sailed. Face the music, you jerk. And I doubt there'll be a welcome mat waiting for you after you're done doing time. No, help me out. As Dennis pleaded, the cops my dad had called showed up and carted him and his lover off. They both ended up behind bars. He got fired. And I got a lawyer, filed for divorce, and claimed damages. Not sure how long he'll be locked up, but I'm betting there won't be a place waiting for him when he's out. Frankly, he brought this on himself. He's gonna pay for what he did. Meanwhile, I quit my job to steer clear of any reminders of my ex. Moved to a neighboring state and landed a gig as a hospital-based clinical psychologist. From here on, it's all about me. I owe a ton to my folks for having my back that day. My plan is to take care of my parents and live my days in peace. My husband never helps with housework, and when I returned home from a business trip, I found the lock not working. Later, the truth was revealed. When I returned home from finishing my business trip, the key to the house wouldn't open. I hurriedly asked my husband through the intercom, Dylan. Why won't the house key work? Oh, I changed the locks. What? Why would you do that? I stood there in shock, and my husband spoke coldly. You know why, right? We can't cause any more trouble in the neighborhood, so go somewhere else quickly. And then, the sound abruptly cut off. I pressed the intercom several times, but it seemed like my husband had turned it off. It remained silent. Then, I received a message from my husband on WhatsApp. I don't need a wife who uses business trips as an excuse to slack off on household chores. Sleep outside until you reflect on your actions. The moment I saw that, I felt my body tremble with anger. He leaves all the housework to me. And then he talks like this just because I went on a business trip? I don't need a husband like this anymore. After this, my foolish husband will face hell. My name is Abigail, a 32-year-old working wife. I originally liked fashion and worked as a stylist for fashion magazines. Due to my lifelong passion for fashion, my outfits have gained popularity to the extent that magazines have featured special articles on them. My social media followers include tens and thousands of fans, including popular models, who specifically request to wear only the outfits coordinated by me, saying, I only want to wear what Abigail has coordinated. My job was fulfilling and enjoyable. As I worked with dedication, I had unknowingly turned 30. My friends, 
concerned about me not having a boyfriend and being focused on work, decided to introduce me to someone. It was there I met Dylan, who would later become my husband. Dylan is a salaried employee at a major cosmetic company's sales department. I instantly liked him at first sight because of his charming smile. He too took an interest in my work, and as we went out to eat together, our relationship began. Amidst our busy work schedules, we managed to fit in dates, and after a year and a half of dating, Dylan said this to me. Abigail, will you marry me? Huh? Really? I'm so happy! To be honest, I thought the proposal was a bit farther down the road, so I was surprised but delighted. But Dylan, I love my job. I want to continue working even after we are married. Dylan then smiled and replied, Of course. You shine when you work hard. Please stay that way even after we get married. Thank you, Dylan. And so, I accepted his proposal, becoming his fiance. Afterward, we arranged a meeting between both family, and there were no significant issues, so we had our wedding. We rented an apartment at the midpoint between our workplaces and started living together. The first month or so felt like a honeymoon, and we were happy. However, gradually, I began to feel a certain dissatisfaction. That dissatisfaction was the fact that Dylan didn't do any housework at all. For example, one day, Dylan, who woke up more slowly than me, began to leisurely eat the breakfast I had prepared. Hey, could you make some coffee? Black is fine. Dylan sang such things as he read the newspaper. I made him a cup of coffee and started tidying up the finished laundry. Of course, Dylan made no attempt to help, and he left the dishes from the meal as they were and headed for the shower. In the meantime, I finished the laundry and cleaned up breakfast for both of us. After that, we both leave for work at the same time. I often come home later. Even though Dylan gets home first, he just lies lazily on the sofa. Hey, Abigail, make dinner quickly. I'm starving. While feeling a bit irritated by his words, I quickly prepared dinner. Dylan ate in silence while looking at his smartphone. Hey, can you stop using your phone during mealtime and have a conversation with me? Quit nagging. It's not a big deal, right? Even when I bring it up, he doesn't stop using his smartphone while eating. After finishing the meal, he goes to take a bath without clearing the dishes. He watches TV and drinks beer while I'm doing the cleanup and the bathroom cleaning. Then, while I'm still not done with all the household chores, he heads to the bedroom by himself. This kind of life continued for several months, and I was accumulating stress. At first, I thought, I'm a wife, so I should do things properly and I tried my best. But my patience had reached its limit with Dylan, who wouldn't do household chores no matter how many times I asked. I finally decided to have a conversation with my husband. Hey Dylan, I have something important to discuss. Huh? What? You suddenly sound serious. I want to have a perfect conversation about dividing household chores. Right now, I'm doing everything right. Can't you help out a bit? Dylan then responded with a surprised expression. Huh? Dividing household chores? Are you telling me to do housework? Yeah, wouldn't it be nice if you could help a bit? What are you talking about? After getting married, isn't housework entirely the wife's job? I've never heard of making the husband do it. Dylan delivered this outdated statement with a straight face and I responded with frustration. That's something from a bygone era. I'm working too, and in a dual-income household, it's common to share responsibility. But my mom did everything. That's because your mom was a housemaker, right? Times and the situations have changed. 
Besides, you know, you said it's okay for me to keep working, right? If that's the case, can you help out with the housework? At that point, Dylan must have given me a fierce look. Work and household chores are not related, right? Anyway, that's a woman's job. Huh? I will never do household chores. It's not something a man should do. You are saying such old fashioned things again. I don't care. I won't do it anyway. You continue taking care of me as you always have, got it? With that, Dylan quickly went to take a bath. I was alone with my head in my hands. Since then, I've been busier than ever with my publication, thinking that this situation wasn't sustainable for managing household chores. I decided to consult a busy colleague who was in a similar situation. They informed me we use a housekeeping service. Upon inquiring further, I learned that this service not only handles cleaning and laundry, they are willing to cook and prepare food for you. I thought this was a good idea and promptly told Dylan about it. Hey Dylan, I'm thinking of hiring a housekeeping service. When I told him that, Dylan made a suspicious face. Huh? What's that? Well, you see, I explained the details and cost of the service. With our income, it's not an unreasonable expense, or so I thought. I thought for sure he'd agree, but. Absolutely not! Huh? I don't want s t r a n g e r in the house, and it's a waste of money, isn't it? Just keep doing everything like before. But I have a publication coming up and I'm busy. That's not relevant. You should keep doing the housework perfectly as you always have. Just because you're busy doesn't mean I will tolerate slacking off. Dylan said it forcefully, glaring at me. I could only stand in shock. Around that time, that Dylan started coming home late, saying he was getting busier at work. That never happened before. He claimed he was working late every day and even working on weekends. Our precious time as a couple disappeared and we continued to lead separate lives. Despite this, I had to keep the house perfectly. While working, I couldn't help but sigh. Zoe, my close friend and a model, curiously asked what was wrong. Abigail, what's wrong? Why do you look so down? Oh, sorry. I've been a little troubled. I'll listen. How about going out for dinner today? On that day, it seems that Dylan was working overtime, so I accepted Zoe's invitation. We went out for a meal, and I couldn't help but vent about Dylan. What? Isn't that terrible? It's like being treated as a servant. Zoe, After hearing my story, got angry, as if it were her own problem. Just having someone listen to me made my heart feel lighter, I realized. At this rate, won't it affect your work? I have always wanted to work with you, Abigail. Zoe expressed her concern, saying she wanted to work with me. Thank you. I really want to focus on my work. If you ever feel like escaping, Feel free to come to my place anytime. I will be there to support you. Zoe said this and shared her home address, which was in a luxury high rise. Our relationship started with work, but now Zoe was like a close friend in both our professional and personal lives. I genuinely appreciated her. After some time had passed, I was assigned to go on a business trip for an event. I informed Dylan, who returned home late. Dylan, I'm going on a three day business trip soon. Huh? A business trip? Yes. While I'm away, I will ask you to take care of the things at home. Upon saying this, Dylan furrowed his eyebrows and began to get angry. Am I supposed to allow such a selfish request? What am I supposed to do about housework while you're gone? Well, there's no choice but for you to do it yourself. It's just three days, right? I don't want to do housework. 
Dylan behaved like a child, and I sighed. How about we hire a professional housekeeper this time? What? You want me to let a stranger into our home? As Dylan began to speak, his expression changed suddenly. Dylan? Well, all right, I guess. I will let you hire someone while you're on your business trip. For some reason, Dylan started to smirk, and I found it puzzling. However, you will have to cover the cost of the housekeeper during that time, understood? If that's what it takes for you to agree, Dylan. So it was decided that I would go on a business trip, and during that time, we would hire a housekeeping service. However, I couldn't help but feel uneasy about Dylan's sudden change of heart. Perhaps there was a hidden reason for his recent late returns, or maybe not. While pondering these thoughts, I secretly installed security surveillance cameras at home without Dylan's knowledge. One week later, I set off on my business trip. I was busy with work during my time away, and three days passed quickly. I bought a souvenir for Dylan and returned home at night, trying to insert the key into the lock. However, for some reason, the key wouldn't turn. No matter how many times I tried, the key wouldn't open the door. Panicked, I pressed the intercom, and Dylan answered. Who is it? It's me. Why isn't the house key working? Oh, I changed the locks. What? Why would you do that? I stood there in shock, and Dylan spoke coldly. You know why, right? You should leave quickly. We don't want to cause a disturbance in the neighborhood. Then, the audio abruptly cut off. I pressed the intercom multiple times, but my husband either turned it off and it wouldn't ring at all. Then, I received a message from Dylan. I don't want a wife who skips housework on the excuse that she's on a business trip. You will be sleeping outdoors until you are sorry. The moment I saw it, I knew I was shaking with rage. You throw all the housework at me, but you say this just because I went on a business trip? I don't want this kind of husband anymore. I turned around silently, grabbed my suitcase, and hailed a taxi. While on the move, I checked the real time footage from the surveillance cameras I had set up at home. There, I saw the worst scenario I had expected in some corner of my heart. Dylan sitting on our couch. Laughing and fooling around with an unfamiliar woman. I successfully drove away that terrible wife. She didn't even notice you were at home. She's a complete idiot. Way to go, Dylan! I'm gathering evidence that she's neglecting housework, and then I plan to divorce her. After that, we can be together, Natalie. Dylan, I'm so happy. I'll be a good wife. Watching this, I felt more disgust than shocked. These two were openly engaging in inappropriate activities in our home. I made sure to record it. After some consideration about where to go, I contacted Zoe. She invited me to her home, and I explained the whole situation to her. Zoe smiled slyly and said this Your husband was a sales department manager at Sleek Cosmetics, right? Yes, he was. But at that moment, Zoe started making a phone call. A few minutes later, an elegantly dressed older lady appeared at Zoe's house. This is my mom. Well, mom? Afterward, Zoe shared something shocking with me. The next day, I returned home. This time, Dylan let me into the house without any resistance. What's got her into you? Have you finally come to your senses? I responded firmly to Dylan's smart. You should be the one reflecting. Huh? I caught Dylan off guard and presented him with a signed divorce agreement. I can't go on with you anymore. Please, let's get a divorce. Upon hearing this, Dylan let out a snort. Did you think I'd back down just because you handed me a divorce agreement? Oh well. I will get a divorce. With a smirk, 
He signed it and handed it back to me. Well then, please come in. I called out to the door, and Zoe and her mother arrived together. Huh? Wait a minute. Zoe, the model? Why are you here? Wait, the president? Dylan's face turned pale. Yes, Zoe's mother was the president of the cosmetics company Dylan worked for. Zoe called her in, and the president was kind enough to listen to me. And after seeing the evidence of my husband's infidelity that I presented, she said, Leave it to me. Hello, Dylan. I'm well aware of your situation. As the president stated this calmly, my husband began to sweat profusely. I yes, but why are you here? I heard that my daughter's best friend is going through a tough time. Zoe and you are related? This fact wasn't publicly known, and I also learned of it for the first time yesterday. Dylan shrank in front of the president. By the way, Dylan, I received a report from someone in the sales department. Oh, It seems you have an unusual relationship with Natalie, who works in the same sales department. There have been days when you both go out together for work and don't return? The president questioned Dylan in a matter-of-fact tone. Dylan began to explain himself nervously. I swear, it's baseless. There's no relationship between her and me. Besides, I have a wife. Is Natalie this person? I played the video of the two engaging in questionable activities that I had recorded. The unbearable sounds echoed through the room. What? Why do you have this? Stop it! Stop it! Dylan made a fierce attempt to snatch my phone from me. Zoe swiftly delivered a sharp chop to his arm. Ah, it hurts! You know, I've done martial arts too, despite my appearance. I'll be your opponent. As Dylan tearfully looked up at Zoe, who was smirking, the president interjected. Regardless, there's evidence of your stay at the lodging in the GPS history of the company car. Well, both you and Natalie will face some consequences, I suppose. What? That's a problem. Yuta is a nice place for your relocation, isn't it? Show your skills in the rural area. Th that's... Seeing that the president's stance remained far, Dylan turned to me desperately. Abigail, please forgive me. I will be a better husband from now on. Please put in a good word with the president. What will happen to me if I get transferred? I pushed Dylan away with all my strength and yelled. You're so noisy. You haven't done anything for me at all. Get ready to pay ad money, you scumbag. Leaving Dylan covered in tears and snot behind. We walked away from the scene. Later, my divorce from Dylan was finalized. I was able to obtain $20,000 in alimony for his infidelity and a significant share of the property. I also claimed $13,000 in alimony from Natalie, his affair partner, who seems to break up with him after leaving her job. Dylan was transferred to a remote location, as per Zoe's mother's orders. He is now working in a faraway place with people whispering about him. He probably won't be able to return to his previous elite career path. On the other hand, I have returned to the single life, and I'm living comfortably. My book has been successfully published, and it's selling well. Zoe and I maintain a close relationship both in work and private life. Lately, we've even been having meals with the company president who supported us. I want to continue working positively while expressing gratitude to my best friend and her mother. My cheating husband, who did not attend his own mother's funeral and stole my bank book, tells me to divorce him. He won't escape me. I'm going to remarry, so you should divorce me. I will give you the house, but the money and the high-class car are mine. I'm sure my not-so-handsome husband is on the other end of the phone with a smug look on his face. I don't blame him for not knowing how good a deal it would be for me. 
Well, even if he wasn't on those terms, I'm confident that I'd be ahead of him. Let me tell you how scary that payback can be. My name is Ellie. I'm 40 years old, and I recently bought a new pillow because the old one wasn't comfortable. It still isn't as comfy as I'd like even if I put a towel under it. So I guess I will have to buy another one. Now, I live a stress-free life where the only thing I have to worry about is my pillow. I used to have a headache over my stressful life until just a few years ago. At that time, I was worried about my husband's infidelity. Huh, he's been going out way too many times. Could it be cheating? I had no proof that he was cheating on me. Just that he was coming home late and going out more often on his days off. There are some traits that men who cheat on their wives have in common. But he does not seem to have his phone on hand during the daytime. Nor does he seem to be calling someone. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But I've heard of women who have made that mistake and I couldn't let it go. I asked my husband a few times. You don't have another woman, do you? I tried to say that in teasing way. No way. It's not like I'm handsome or anything. He just laughed it off. His reply was not particularly strange, but rather natural. But you know, something is bugging me. I don't have enough experience in love to be able to say that this is what you call a woman's intuition, so I'm not sure. But one day, when I was thinking like that, I got a call that my mother-in-law, who lived nearby, had collapsed. It seems that she suddenly collapsed while shopping and was rushed to the hospital, and that she had a hemorrhage that was too severe. My husband was at work when the call came in. I went to the hospital alone. My husband's workplace does not allow him to look at his cell phone while he is at work. He would have noticed it during his next lunch break, and he would have come to me because of the situation I thought. When my husband called me during his lunch break, he said, I'm busy today, so I can't come no matter what. Although, it was a very busy time of the year when his father got ill. His boss told him, You can visit him whenever you want. In fact, my husband went to the hospital all the time. It has been less than three years since then. So why can't he come visit her this time? I haven't heard that his boss has been replaced. There were many times when he came home late, but he went out for dinner with his colleagues or something. He never seems to be busy with such things before. My mother-in-law collapsed, but my husband didn't go to visit her. Why is he so busy at such an important time? I'm a little bothered because I suspected that my husband was cheating. I can't help but feel sorry for my mother-in-law, though it can't be helped if it's work. In the end, my mother-in-law spent many days unconscious on the bed. During that time, I went to the hospital often, but my husband never once showed up. So you're just gonna leave everything to me? My husband said. She's unconscious and wouldn't be able to understand what I'm talking about. So what's the point? But it might make a difference if you just talk to her. That's just a superstition. They can hear you, you know. He just laughed at me. You never know unless you try. We haven't been in a coma ourselves, so we don't know, right? If it bothers you so much, why don't you try to talk to her? My husband was always making excuses to have dinner with his boss or to relax on his days off. I never felt any of his concern for my mother-in-law. Just before my father-in-law passed away, even though he was unconscious, Charles took time out of his work schedule to visit him. It is a mystery to me why there is such a difference in his attitude toward my mother-in-law compared to that toward my father-in-law, even though he never seems to dislike her. My mother-in-law has been very good to me, and there is no reason for her son to dislike her.
Now that we have been married for a long time, I knew something was different. It was a rainy day. I had just left the supermarket after visiting my mother in law in the hospital. It was raining hard, and my vision was limited by the umbrella. But I saw my husband and a stranger entering an apartment building under a shared umbrella. I caught a glimpse of them, and I think they were arm in arm. I was shocked to see him walking with his mistress on the way home from the hospital, that I was a little stuck there. I knew he was cheating on me. I regretted not having a camera. I could have used the evidence to my advantage, but the fact that he never went to his mother and instead went to the woman's house with such enthusiasm, the word filthy popped up in my mind. I am filled with anger rather than sadness or frustration. I would question my husband with all the evidence I could muster. That's what I thought. But two days later, I received a call from the hospital that my mother in law had passed away. It had been a month and a half since she was hospitalized, and she had been on a mend for a while, but the shock was too much. After witnessing my husband's affair, I felt as if I didn't want to talk to him. But just as I was trying to be a proper couple with him in front of my mother in law, he said to me, I can't go to the funeral. What? I couldn't believe my ears when my husband said that. She's your own mother, isn't she? Why are you being so cold? Your mother is dead. Hum. As much as I'd love to go, I have to go to work. Liar! You're going to that girl's place anyway, aren't you? I held my mouth without thinking. I was going to pretend as if I didn't know about the affair yet. I was so angry that I ended up bursting it out. What? You knew? Yes, she's more important than a dead parent. This is an important time indeed. What the hell? That's disgusting! I got angry and slapped my husband crying. He sighed in disapproval and said, I'm going to work. He heads for the door with his bag in his hand. I have so many things to say, and I want to grab my husband by his shirt and yell at him. But I was so frustrated and angry that I couldn't take a single step. Filthy, irresponsible, selfish, outrageous. I can't stop thinking of all those words. I didn't want to send my mother-in-law off like this, so I tried my best to calm down and wiped away the tears from my eyes thinking that at least I should send her off properly. I cooled my eyes and went to the funeral. When I returned from the funeral that night, there was no car in the garage and my husband had not returned home yet. I guess he's probably just relaxing with that girl, thinking that the affair is out in the open. It really pisses me off. Remembering my frustration before I left home again, I opened the drawer to put the pearl necklace I was wearing back on the shelf. I realized my bank book was missing. It should be here. I went through the contents to see if I had misplaced it, but there was no sign of it. In fact, the contents were in their usual orderly state, so it couldn't have gotten lost anywhere. The other item, my husband's expensive watch, which I had kept for him was also missing. He used to wear it when he was entertaining a special guest to put himself in a good mood. He was not wearing it when he left the house today. I had a bad feeling about this, so I checked the whole house. My husband's backpack was gone, and I found that the clothes in the wardrobe were missing. That man. He left the house during the funeral? I thought he might have gone out to the neighborhood, but... He wouldn't take his clothes and run away. I was just about to call when I got a phone call from my husband. Hello? Oh, Ellie. Did you finish the funeral? Huh? If you care about the funeral, you should at least go. Where are you right now? I'm still at work. That's a lie. Don't play dumb with me. Where's my bank book? What? 
I try to take it out of the room as gently as possible. But have you already noticed? I was trying to stall you. But if you already found out, I guess I will have to do it. I got my girlfriend pregnant. I need a fresh start. What? I will remarry, so you should divorce me. I will give you the house, but the money and the expensive car are mine. I left you the papers and everything. You should be grateful. Ha ha ha. Oh, I got a great deal. Ha ha ha. Huh? To be honest, my husband's declaration was too much of a lucky deal for me. What do you mean, ha?、Huh? That's my line. Are you sure you want to do it under those conditions? What do you mean you got a great deal? You got a little something stashed away in that shabby house? Might be close. What do you mean? I didn't tell you this because I was going to say no. But our neighbor actually wants to buy our land. What? Why? It's a shabby house and not in the best of neighborhoods. Their neighbor wants her son and his wife to come back with their kids and build a house on our land. There are kindergartens and elementary schools nearby. Well, but the land is so cheap. No wonder how much it will be sold to the neighbor for. My husband sneaker. Don't you know? The value of the land around here is going up. They are planning to build a large commercial and tourist place nearby, so it will be more convenient. There's a rumor there is going to be a train station. The neighbor's son is planning to move here in anticipation. He said he will pay more than the market price for the land if we sell it to him. That's twice what we paid for. My husband was stunned by what I said. The price of the land alone is more than the money in my bank book and the car. And for the record, I hardly ever drive, and that car isn't even an eco friendly car, is it? You call it a luxury car, but an old school Mercedes. I don't need it because it's expensive to maintain. The time has come for eco friendly cars. Yes, our car was certainly a well known luxury car when we bought it. But after more than 15 years, the car is a shabby condition, and it costs a lot of money to maintain it. My husband may feel brand new recognition. Because it was a luxury car that he was able to buy. As for me, it is just a piece of iron left behind by the times. There was no reason for me to want it. Well, if you are happy with it, fine. Divorce me anyway. I will give you a divorce if you and your partner give me alimony. But if not, I will never divorce you. Huh? You have money for the land. She's got nothing to do with this. This is our problem, right? What are you talking about? This is a problem that you and your affair partner had caused. Of course she's involved. It's all about money, isn't it? Don't try to cover it up. And if you love your partner, why don't you just pay the alimony generously? Or is your relationship with your partner also about money? Ha ha ha. Don't mess around with me. Oh, I'm scared. I'm not messing around, but I guess you don't have a stomach for it. I feel sorry for the other woman's child. She's stuck with a man who got her pregnant and then abandoned his responsibility when his wife asked for alimony. I will pay it. I'm not that kind of man. First of all, I've got your bank book right here, and worst of all. You can't just take them. My husband sneakers. I will give a big fat expose to this guy. It's hard being someone who does everything manually. What? What's with you all of a sudden? Banks these days have apps that let you transfer money. I will have the money in my account during this call. Don't you know that? I've moved on to online banking. I'm glad I let the call go on so long. It was a big success. What? You don't. You don't have the app or the PIN number, so you're gonna have to go to the bank every time you want to look it up. Tough luck. The struggles of the digitally challenged. Hmm hmm. 
My husband is speechless by I love. I guess he was more shocked than I expected. Shame. Now if you want a divorce, you will have to pay me alimony. You and your partner. You are kidding. It's true. You are boring for a guy who does such a big thing as cheating on his wife. You should at least say something good. You will pay alimony, right? You want to have a second life with your partner, don't you? Don't tell me you want to stay married to me because you can't afford it. Saying that, I deliberately provoked my husband again and again. If I don't divorce him, his baby would learn that his father was a scumbag. If he doesn't get a divorce, his mistress will have to support the child by herself. He will end up with no money, poor thing. I won't pay it. It was so funny that my husband was sobbing in the middle of the conversation, that I was more excited now than I had planned to be, and I couldn't help but provoke him. In the end, my husband realized that it would be the hell for him to stay married to me, and he chose to pay me alimony and live with his partner. I deliberately provoked him to think so, so it was all planned. Because I don't think I would ever live with such a man again. And while my husband was sulking, I said, If you don't want to be called a thief in front of your company, give me back the bank book. Because I know where your mistress lives, and I don't care what happens to you. I threatened him, and he said in a quiet voice, Yes, I'm sorry. I couldn't understand him because he was crying. I guess he was afraid of my provocation. After that, we discussed divorce, and it was decided to demand alimony from both the cheater and my husband. Well, actually, the cheating partner is pregnant and quit her job, so it seems that the husband is going to pay everything for the time being. As a matter of fact, he had proposed to share the property with me for the land. But I cited his criminal record of stealing my bank book and said to him, Who are you to talk like that? I was so hard on him that he gave up. I may have threatened him a little, but since he had a child with another woman and left his own parents to me, I guess I could be forgiven at least this much. My husband, who was supposed to be smiling with pride at having a lot of money and a luxury car, was worried about the fact that even his savings would be dried up in the future. It's hard to be the one who has to pay all the bills, isn't it? I thought about imitating a baby and saying, Hang in there, daddy, but decided against it, thinking it would be in bad taste. The cheater was quite nervous, but well, it wouldn't be good if something happened to the baby if I destroyed them too much. I'm so nice. It turns out that my ex-husband often left work after his mother had fallen ill and met with his girlfriend in between. But the company found out. Someone on paid leave saw him and the woman he was having an affair with working together. Due to this, he got a pay cut. There is alimony, money for the kid in the future, moving out of an apartment that's not suited for raising kids, and a whole bunch of other events that cost money. Maybe that's why, when we were discussing about divorce, the woman in me, who had detected his affair at an early stage, said that the couple might not last long because the cheating partner who was present at the meeting seemed a little cold toward my husband. Whether it is true or not is another story. On the other hand, I sold my land and moved to a new place, and now I'm working as an IT school teacher for children. Actually, I had the same job before I got married, so it was easy for me to find a job. I have never raised children myself, but there are so many children here that they all seem like my own. Many of them are shy, but they all love computers. They seem to think of me as someone they can talk about what they like, and they are completely comfortable with me. They are so cute that they come to the places where the instructors gather, even outside the class time. I hope that one day, these children will be in charge of the future of this country. Many of my co-workers are also single, 
so we all go out together on our days off. Being alone is not so bad when you have something to enjoy. I used to prepare dinner at a certain time, vacuum the house, and call it a day. I feel that I'm enjoying the present much more than when I was a housewife. I don't know what will happen in the future, but for the time being, I will enjoy this special luxury. While on a trip, my husband mistakenly texted daughter. Yesterday's photo. Waiting at the hotel today, babe. Curious. I headed to... Mom, I got a weird text from Dad. My daughter approached me, a worried expression evident. My husband was out of town on business, and while he had said to reach out if anything came up, I was puzzled about why he'd message our daughter. Intrigued, I glanced at the text, and the accompanying photo left me stunned. Beneath the image was a remark from my husband, teasingly predicting my reaction. It's a picture from yesterday, baby. I'll be at the hotel again today. In a fury, I left the house to meet someone. From that moment on, my husband was in for a tough time. I'm Sandra, and I'm 32 years old. I have a corporate job as an executive secretary, and I'm also a stay-at-home mom. My husband, Tony, also works in an office setting and is on the fast track because of his outstanding contributions. Our daughter, Stacy, is a first grader. She's a bit of a handful at times, but overall, she's turning out to be a sweet kid. Life seems pretty good with a steady job, a successful husband, and an adorable daughter. To outsiders, it might seem like I'm living the dream. But, behind closed doors, we had a problem. Tony had this habit of making offhand remarks to both our daughter and me. What's more, he genuinely thought he was being helpful. Tony and I originally met in a college group. I first saw him as this good-looking guy who always looked put together. But then... I wasn't really into him. I just thought it was cool having a handsome guy in the group. At a group outing, I had a bit too much to drink and felt sick. Amid the party's chaos, I was hesitant to step away. That's when he gracefully escorted me outside. When I expressed my gratitude, he just smiled and said, Don't worry about it. After that, I started seeing him in a different light. Eventually, I plucked up the courage to swap contact info, and he was on board. Things clicked. I shared how I felt, and we started going out. We stuck together even after college. We got married when I was 25. Life as a married couple was smooth, and many even said we seemed like the ideal pair. I felt on top of the world. But as time went on, I began to see things differently. He was no help around the house. We'd talked about splitting chores since we both had jobs. But he'd always come up with reasons, saying he forgot or was swamped at work. Tony... Why are the dishes and laundry still here? You said you'd handle them the other day when work got busy. And I even swapped tasks with you. No matter how much I called him out, it didn't seem to matter. His apologies always seemed insincere. I honestly forgot. I'm beat today. So can you take care of the chores? I swear... I'll remember next time. But he never followed through. Even worse, he'd ask for personal favors while deep into his games on his smartphone. Casually saying things like, Make me some coffee. Or, Get my clothes ready. 
Once after I'd made pork chops, he said, Actually, I was in the mood for steak. I'll pass on the pork chops. Whip up something different? I was so ticked off, I could have thrown something at him hard. Most of the time, I wound up doing all the household chores myself. I never thought he could be this thoughtless. In the midst of these trying times, we welcomed our daughter, Stacy. I held on to some hope. Perhaps, with a kid, he'd grow up a bit and step up. But I was wrong. Childcare was left to me. Sure, if I asked for help, he'd do it. But he clearly wasn't thrilled. Once I overheard him say, Well, you are her mom. It was as if he thought raising our child was solely my duty. Isn't raising a child a shared responsibility? Why doesn't he get that? Whenever I'd ask him to change diapers or give her a bottle, he'd do it, but begrudgingly. If she got even slightly fussy, he'd hand her right back, saying it was too much for him. When I needed him to watch her while I cooked, he'd just hang back, engrossed in his phone. At worst, he'd just let her zone out with an iPad. And that was it. When bedtime rolled around, or when I asked for a ride, he'd pass, saying he was wiped out. On nights, when she was particularly fussy, he'd go to another room to avoid the noise. And weekends? While I balanced house chores and parenting, he'd sleep in, play on his phone, and just veg out on the couch, oblivious to our crying child. He left all the tough stuff to me, but wanted the fun parts. Like when she was about a year old, and acting out, I had to lay down the law. Of course, she cried, but I believed it was for the best. Seeing this, Tony nonchalantly said, Wasn't that a bit much? She's just a kid. Kids will be kids. I think you're going overboard. As her mom, shouldn't you be more understanding? I can't even begin to describe how I felt then. I never wanted to be the bad guy with my daughter. Even though I had tough moments with her, it was all because I cared about her future. What could he possibly know? Always taking the path of least resistance and barely participating in parenting. Throughout Stacy's younger years, I held back from confronting him in front of her. But when she turned four, his attitude shifted. He started dishing out unasked for advice on her upbringing. I found out it was due to a TV show where a famous person's dad was talking about his parenting choices. The father said, I enrolled my child in many activities to develop her talents. Inspired by this, Tony suddenly wanted to emulate that dad. Honestly, it seemed ludicrous to me. Sure, that celebrity might have refined some skills through classes, but their success was mostly their own making. No matter how many lessons you push on a kid, it's pointless if they're not into it. I want Stacy to have a carefree childhood. But Tony, ignoring my opinion, enrolled her in a ton of classes, piano, swimming, and ballet. And he did this without even asking me. Naturally, our little girl was overwhelmed with all this stuff when she just wanted to have fun, leading to more meltdowns. While she did enjoy swimming, she wasn't into piano or ballet. So I let her stick with swimming and 
pulled her out of the other two. But when he griped, saying, Why'd you pull her from piano and ballet? If she ever goes into entertainment, she'll need those skills. You're depriving her of possibilities. If you cared, you'd have kept her in those classes. His nerve was something else. I couldn't even begin to find words that described how irritated I was at him. Our daughter never expressed interest in entertainment or showbiz. Why push these lessons on her? Later, I told him straight. I took her out because she didn't want to continue. She's only four. Playtime with friends is more important than endless lessons for her right now. Don't drag her into your fantasies. I'm thinking of her future too. Stop making me out to be the bad guy. She didn't sign up for this. If she doesn't want these classes, I'll pull her out count on it. He still looked pretty annoyed. Still, he went behind my back, enrolling her in gymnastics, French, and karate. But I pulled her out when she expressed disinterest. I wished he'd stop the cycle, but he kept it up. Then, when she turned six, he wanted her in a computer class. A half hour drive away. By this point, I was working and couldn't manage the pickups and drop-offs. Despite me telling him this, Tony still signed her up. To make matters worse, he lied to my mom, telling her we both agreed on it, and asked her to do the driving. My mom, ever the sweetheart, said, Kids should learn all they can. I've got this. Which made me feel even worse. But to my surprise, the computer class worked out, and Stacy liked it. Just when I thought we were on even ground, he said, This is the digital age. Let's get Stacy a smartphone. She's getting the hang of the internet with her class. I was dead set against this. A smartphone for a first grader seemed way too early. I kept thinking about those online incidents involving young kids I'd heard about on the news. The idea of her getting caught up in something scary was too much. Still, over my objections, Tony took her to a store and got her a smartphone using our shared savings. He said he'd teach her how to use it, but whenever she had a question, he'd just brush her off with, Ask your mom. This all culminated in a big blowout, me yelling, I've had it. We only cooled down when Stacy started crying, but I was still seething. I even considered divorce, but thinking about our daughter kept me in check. A bit later, Tony was set to leave on a business trip for several days. He seemed oddly upbeat about it, which got me wondering. And then, the next day, something totally unexpected happened. As I was prepping dinner, Stacy walked up, looking troubled. Mom, can you come here for a sec? I got a text from Dad. From Dad? What did he say? I don't really get it. There's a picture attached. Her face gave away her confusion. Why does she look so upset? It all made sense when I saw the image. My husband had sent a picture to our daughter, and it was definitely inappropriate. The photo was of a woman in just her underwear, wearing his jacket. I was dumbfounded. Under the photo was a message. This was from yesterday, baby. I'll be at that hotel again today. He even mentioned the room number. Everything fell into place. He wasn't on a business trip. He was having a fling and accidentally texted our daughter. I was livid. If my daughter hadn't been right there, I would have gone ballistic. I tried to calm her. It's okay, sweetie. 
I've got this. But inside, I was plotting. That jerk is going to regret this big time. After leaving Stacy with my mom, I headed to that hotel with some backup. When I got to his room and rang the bell, an overly cheerful Tony, just in his boxers, opened the door. Lisa, you're late. Wait, what? His face went pale when he saw me, and even more so when he spotted who was with me. Tony, care to explain? B ben, I thought you took time off for your, your sick daughter. The person I brought was my dad. As it turns out, Tony worked for my dad's business. The condo we lived in? Dad's name was on it. I chose to work elsewhere to be independent from family ties, so I had no clue Tony was on leave. My dad and I stepped inside, and I laid out why we were there. Grasping the gravity of his mistake, he looked crushed. My dad grilled him, and he came clean. He had started using a dating app after we had some disagreements, and got wrapped up with a younger woman from there. The woman in the photo was named Lisa, seven years his junior. I firmly told him we were done, and that I wanted out. My dad laid into him about what he could expect next. Freaking out, Tony pleaded. I'm sorry, I messed up. You're the only one for me, Sandra. I'll never stray again. Please, give me another chance. I was beyond disgusted. The cheating? I could almost move past that. I was almost grateful for him for giving me the reason for getting a divorce. But that photo sent to our kid? No way. Are you kidding me? You think I'll stay with someone who does something so sleazy? This isn't a good environment for our daughter. I don't want her around you. No, don't keep her from me. I swear I'll step up, even with chores. I want to be there for her. You can't even be a dad without messing up, and now you've gone and cheated? Save it. You're the lowest of the low. How could you send that disgusting picture to our daughter, for God's sake? Gear up for a divorce. Embrace yourself for what you owe me. He was a mess. But I felt nothing. Later on, I divorced Tony. Got a fair deal. And naturally, got custody. We struck a deal. No child support in exchange for him staying away from Stacy. She was actually relieved. Tired of his constant badgering about after-school activities. My dad, of course, let him go from the company. Where it is, even his folks cut ties after learning about his affair. No one's heard from him since. Without the boost from being married to me, he couldn't get a job. But that's not my concern now. My daughter Stacy is living her best life, free from being overloaded with classes. I'm not certain what she aspires to be, but whatever she chooses, I'll have her back.